Welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of Genius Days. Today is all about trust mastery. It's so funny because we posted a different link so people wouldn't trust us. However, we have the right link now and the trust has been regained. So trust is a very interesting thing, right? It's related to credibility. It's related to a lot of different things, man. We got to be trustations. So like crustaceans have claws. We got to be trustations. We got to have claws. At the same time, we got to be able to trust in our own faculties and our own abilities. So be able to swim on the path with the trust. So that's kind of what came up for me just as a random download. But let's start off with the disclaimers like we always do. So let the audience know, one of you, about what they need to be aware of before we begin. Yeah, so... Everybody, you're a grown adult. Make your own decisions. Hmm. Okay. Don't let nobody tell you that you can't do something. All right. But also don't say that someone told you to do something. All right. Uh, we're here to share our experiences. Here to share from our past. Uh, don't talk shit or we'll fucking ch ch chop your tongue off. I don't know, something like that. Um, but if you sp if you speak nice about us, we'll give you the tongues of all the peoples we've cut off. So that's a gift. So, <laughs> you know, do your best to be the best of you. All right. So by now, offer will expire shortly. <laughs> great. That's a great way to kick this off. You know, I was thinking about the scale of consciousness, how, you know, Dr. David R. David R. Hawkins, he has this book called Truth Versus Falsehood, and it's kind of like his next sequel, uh, After Power Versus Force, and what he basically says is, like, beyond courage is this level of truth, so energy expansion is actually true, and energy draining is actually falsehood, so when we tell lies, right, when we're holding different lies in, it's actually energy draining which I thought was really interesting. Speaking of the fact, Ivan, you started off by saying like, we're gonna cut people's tongues off. It, it sort of reminded me of the gangster code, right? And how, you know, it's so interesting how gangsters have this idea of like, not lying, but also not uh, basically saying things. They're, they're basically uh, men of their word, right? And a lot of these criminal organizations, they have to have that level of trust even at the same time, they're doing maybe illegal activities, which shows different kind of like lack of trust. However, I think they're this kind of paradox, this kind of juxtaposition is very interesting to me. So I wonder what you guys have to say about that. And yeah, the organization around that. Oh, you want to talk about gangsters and trust? <laughs> well... Uh, yeah, I think I think inside of a certain world, there's a certain code, you know, uh, and it might not be a code that matches other parts of the world, but internally they have their own code. So, uh, um, I mean, I just jumped in on this, but I, I think, you know, we need to find a, a, like integrity is this idea. There's like integrity, there's like this judgment integrity, but there's also this workability integrity. Like integrity is workability. So if you have a like one of these tires with spokes and you lose a spoke, you might lose one spoke and it might be workable, but you lose ten. You like know, you know, at some point, it doesn't work anymore. It loses workability. Um, and so in any organization, you need to have enough spokes, enough integrity within the organization that works. And so when I think of gangsters, I think of uh, you know, it works within the organization, but it doesn't necessarily work with the rest of society. That's very interesting. Yeah, I like what you said in terms of the, the effectiveness aspect, so the, the efficiency aspect, because truth is, they say that truth is the best measure of effectiveness, right? So when something is working, we know that it's more along the lines of, you know, what, what is true. Uh, however, yeah, we live also in a culture of mirage and like, you know, falsehood and like covers and appearances, which can definitely become elusive to a certain point. But 
this is the trust code. We're talking about the pillar of safety. Uh, Ivan, when you were naming this event, you know, around pillar of safety, do you want to speak a little bit about that, how trust is the pillar of safety? Yeah, I just sort of thought that if we all had a little bit more trust in the universe, we'd feel a little bit better about ourselves. You know, um, what I'm realizing is that there's really like no such thing as manifestation in the sense of like, oh, you know, if I put all my willpower in it, uh create the right conditions I, I don't i don't think i create the conditions anymore i think i just move into opportunities i think i just have a desire and i move into opportunities right but i move in with a lot of trust but the same kind of trust that you would have when you go to a supermarket and you see a sliding doors and you don't doubt that those sliding doors are going to open up and you just walk in you very confidently that those doors are going to open you're not scared that you're going to crash into no wall right and so to me that's trust i think we had a little bit more of that that we'd be doing probably a lot better because i realized that um you know like i've made this this past two weeks i made like, like three x like three X my money, but like, I didn't create the conditions. All I did was move into the opportunity, right? Because I had the desire and I had to trust in myself that I could handle more responsibility. Uh, but you see, uh, it came because my dad got sick, right? And he had to be hospitalized from COVID. And so I had to, uh, you know, cover his work. And um, it's, there's been a lot of figuring out to do, right? But like, I realized like, like I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to work really hard. I didn't have to, I don't know. Like, I, like I, I don't, I realized like I didn't do anything for the position to be created. The position existed in and of itself already. And I just stepped into it. You know, I didn't create it from scratch, you know, and I didn't make my dad sick either. You know, that just, it happened to be like that, right? But it is, it is Leo, it is Leo, Leo uh, Moon that, that we're in. And so my dad is obviously, he's a Leo. He's not, he's not obvious. That's not obvious, but um, he's a Leo. So he's going through his own experiences that are developing him and challenging him uh, to, to force himself to see the world as it is and not as he wants it to be. Right. And I'm also learning this other new, new experience of what it means that to really know that the universe, uh, all you have to do is jump at the opportunity and, um, you don't have to try, you don't have to work so hard. Like, you know, it's not going to be very hard. Like, you know, like even me managing this and then managing the other things that I had to manage. And I still come to Mexico. Like it's like, it's like I, I'm not overwhelmed by all the work, right? Even though it was suddenly a lot of it. And so it's just moving like with so much ease, you know, because I just tr hella trust. That's what I gotta say about trust. Man, I really like what you said about jumping into the opportunities and the fact that the opportunities are already there, but our experiences just create these permissions for us to like step into it almost. Like when we have like a sensor at the market, like you said, like we don't need to be conscious about the fact that our digestive system is working. It's just working unconsciously, right? Like we're just digesting. And it's like, once we put importance to it, and we know that it's working, but it's like, it's still in the background. So we have a sense of trust in our immune system, in our digestive system, in our, you know, um, our endocrine system and all this kind of stuff, right? And, but it's very much in the background, right? It's like, once we recognize the opportunity of our organs and like, if we eat better or whatever, we're going to actually help those systems, 
right? So yeah, I think that, yeah, just making that point in terms of trust and opportunity, I think that's cool. Uh, what do you have to say about that, Joe? Yeah, you know, I, I've been really, I heard this metaphor not, not that long ago, but it's the farmer plants the seeds and waters them. He trusts that some of those seeds will sprout, you know, and he has basically a, a farmer really has only three jobs. Number one is to plant seeds. He's not responsible for the miracle of life, you know, but we trust that if you plant seeds, some of them are going to sprout, okay? We, we, we trust that if you have sex with a woman, that nine months later, a baby's going to come out, okay? We trust that there's a process. Um, but the other thing that the farmer needs to do is water the crops. And the third thing is, is he, he needs to be there when it's now, be there when it's now. So we... You know, so when he walks, it's like, oh, this avocado is not ready. This, you know, this avocado is not ready. Ah, be there when it's now. This avocado is ready. Clip, you put it in your basket. And so like a lot of times, like in business, it's like, oh, you know, it's like trying to make some sales. But, you know, you don't need, if you just keep nurturing your crops, if you just keep, you know, planting and watering and then being there when it's now, I don't need to stress when my, my next client's going to show up. I, I, I can't make that happen. I can't make somebody be ready. I can plant the seeds. I can water. I can nurture. I like what Alejandro said, create the conditions. You didn't do that. But, you know, even if you don't create the conditions of, you know, you, you walk by and you see a, an orange tree, you know, oh, there's an orange and it's ready. Boom, I'm eating that baby because it's juicy and it's perfect. It's amazing. And so I really like this idea of just, you know, whether we create the process, uh, the conditions or not, the farmer does create the conditions, but it's very simple. Um, you know, and, and Sumed, on our last podcast we did, we talked, you talked about, um, um, Oh gosh, I'm just blanking a little bit. You talked about, um, I don't know, I, I'm blanking here, but <laughs> so, but, but this idea of be there when it's now, it, it's like, we, we can't force things to happen, but things happen and trusting the process. That's what it really was so in, in the podcast. You know what process thinking versus what procedural? Yeah, I remember, I remember now. So I was talking about this idea of giving up predictive control for process control. And right? so, yeah, yeah, we can't predict always what will happen, but we can trust the process itself. And so, right. you know, there's processes that work and processes that don't work, but we can trust the process. Uh, and that's the thing is, is being grounded in the truth about reality and having a relentless commitment to the truth about reality. That will help us grow, okay? Because when we, when we, when we really, to have a commitment to the truth, when we have a commitment to the truth of the process, when we know processes are true, then we can trust those processes. And I'm interested in hearing what Ryan has to say. Speaking of processes, I believe trust is something that's gained over time. Trust is worth money because money is the ultimate symbol of trust. If I pay someone to get me a service, I expect a certain standard. As why when we go to certain hotels, why we buy certain brands, when we go to certain restaurants, be it one star, three stars, or whatever star, uh, Michelin restaurants, you expect a certain standard. And when it comes to trust, I believe Marco Pierre White, Gordon Ramsay's mentor says it best. You create a system that at some point can be standardized because you already reached a certain quality, expected quality of a professional. And then you see me create a system around that standard also known as trust. Hence people who call themselves professionals have a standard because it can be trusted that when they are given a certain 
problem, a certain task, a certain challenge, they will deliver the expected result or outcome. And in that, you can also find another variation of trust, meaning very similar to the gangs, professionals, be data professionals, be business professionals, spiritual professionals, they are beyond common sense. They deliver us results that we cannot get ourselves. It is very similar to looking at the army. I expect more from a corporate general than from a food shorter because he knows how to carry himself, his team, and his responsibilities. And you see it in the way that they carry themselves, from the way that they dress to the way that they act. Sumit, so you're shaking your head a lot. What's coming up? Man, that just reminds me of like character, you know, as you said that, like the trustworthy character, or the, let's say the business avatar that we create for ourselves, it's hugely dependent on trust, right? I was at the event, uh, Money, Power, Respect yesterday, uh, Devin and Trent Lara and AZD's event. And, you know, what Devin started saying is, you know, he's kind of, you know, tripled his income in the last like few uh, months and things like that so he was talking about the idea of the like the trustworthy character right like when I signed up for his personal uh, coaching you know I realized that I'm giving my credit card details out loud into the phone like to the sky you know what I mean and it's simply because there is this level of trust there right I wouldn't just do that to anybody right I wouldn't be like you know simply give my card details to someone random but the fact that he's DC, you know, there's a character, there's a brand there, there's a fitness archetype there. He's showing the results to the people, you know, uh, on his Instagram, things like this. He's showing the, the different processes that he's doing. He's adding a lot of value. So it's not seen as bragging, right? And there's all of these different elements to it. So I think that there is this level of credibility that's built through the character itself. And something that I'm doing recently is I'm saving my testimonials like on my phone, like on my favorites. So it's almost like a testimonial swipe file. So when I go to different events or when I go to like these different uh, places, I just show them these testimonials. I'm like, hey, check out this guy that I helped, right? I think that's a really, really good idea that I highly recommend the audience to, to do for their own business or their own work. You know, you said something that made me crack up, which was a phonological ambiguity. I gave my credit card to this guy, but I gave my credit card to the sky. <laughs> I don't know. You might trust this. You might trust this guy, but I don't. I don't know if I trust the sky. You know, and so we do need to have a little bit of privacy around that. But I, it just cracked me up that I give my credit card to the sky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's maybe like you don't want to do that but <laughs> i love this topic though i you know uh trust mastery safety you know it's not just a pillar of safety it's a pillar of integrity it's a pillar of foundation it's a pillar of strength you know trust is a, it, it, it's kind of a glue that holds it's kind of a keystone it's a keystone to the to everything because if there is no you know, there's a, there was a course out there many years ago, trust equals no sale. I mean, it's a pillar of business. You know, business is really about, business is really simple. I'm going to make a promise to you. You're going to pay me to deliver on that promise. And then I'm going to truly deliver on the goodies. You know, but if, they, if, if, you know, if I make a promise to you and you don't trust that I can deliver on that promise, no trust equals no sale. It's a pillar of relationships. You know, you're with somebody, I love you, you love me, but we don't trust. I got a girl in my life. Well, she's kind of past life, but I love the girl. She's a beautiful girl. She used to be a sweet girl, but she got addicted to, to crystal meth. And I don't trust her anymore. She just doesn't, she lies about everything. 
And so trust is a pillar of so many things. Uh, you know, um, I trust that if I go to the gym and work out that, you know, I'm going to have benefits from that. I trust that if I eat better food, I trust that if I eat better food, I'll, I'll have uh, more longevity, more wellness, you know? So I, I love this topic and trust is a pillar of many things and maybe other things that I'm not thinking of, but I'll pass it on to you guys. You know, trust is a pillar of spirituality. Trust is a, you know, I, I think, Ryan, you said something about it. You know, you trust, you know, in our, our currency in America, it says in God we trust. I trust God. I don't know if I trust all the other, everyone else. It's a pillar of I don't know if you guys ever saw, let's say, Kitchen Nightmares with Gordon Ramsay. I've been watching a lot of kitchen cookie shelf lately but when Gordon goes to a restaurant they trust him to a certain extent to fix their restaurant he's a professional celebrity chef and he's proven time and time again that he knows what he's doing by both losing his stars and getting him back and because he went through this process and he's making a show about helping other restaurants gain notoriety, increase new standards, increase entertainment. We know for very sure that when he goes to these absolute garbage restaurants, whose food is absolute quote unquote shit, he looks at the problem and truly tries to pinpoint what are symptoms and what are root causes. And then he simply trusts his experience and he trusts the owner to be honest, to be upright and simply say it how it is. Of course, afterwards, the drama starts, usually the owner is not you know, upfront about it, etc. But that's how he earns his money. I mean, Gordon. I mean, what I really, what we can really learn from Gordon Ramsay as a, let's say, a business professional is how to swim around the distrust that's within the restaurants, be it between the management and the employees. And you see how by hiring, hiring the correct coach, the correct mentor, the correct guru, you can bring new life. Because without trust, there is no such thing as business or the idea of business will not even exist without trust. I cannot work for someone if I don't trust them because if I do the job and I do not get paid for my services, I'm going to fuck someone up. And in that nature, I cannot get paid and do a garbage job. That means I will get fired or have to pay a fine, etc., etc., etc. I'm liable to be sued because, you know, and that's why contracts are very important, be it verbal, be it on paper. And that's why as well, making sure that the expectations from both parties are written down as specifically and as realistically, of course, as possible. Let's say if I have a restaurant here yeah, and I hire Joe Nicasio to somehow fix my restaurant. I believe, because a restaurant is a business at the end of the day, not just a place I go get food. I believe that Johnny Cassio could help me. I'm not sure if Johnny Cassio is a celebrity chef, but at the very least, I will be doing better business. Joe, what are your thoughts on that? I like that. Um, I like the fact that you're hiring me. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, you know, one of the things you were talking about is, you know, the restaurant example and, you know, sometimes we go to a restaurant, this is an example I use a lot. Um, but you know, you go to a restaurant, it's got a nice ambience, it's got nice food, you know, it's got a great menu, you know, you order your food, it's delicious. 
And then, you know, I, I use this about branding and brand consistency. I talk about this, but, you know, you're having this great experience. You, you're feeling good. You're laughing and you got to go to the bathroom and you go to the bathroom and it's disgusting. It's gross. It makes you want to vomit. Okay. All of a sudden your feelings about that restaurant go from a 10 to a minus 10. And you know, there's this idea of forgiveness, okay? Sometimes people leave a mess in the bathroom, okay? It's just, there are human disgusting people. You can't even blame the restaurant necessarily for the fact that one minute it was clean and then next minute somebody just did something disgusting. But the point is, as a consumer, you're feeling good and then you're not feeling so good and you're like, honey, let's get the kids and like, let's get out of this place because it's gross, it's not right. And so... Uh, and, and for a lot of for a lot of restaurant owners, they don't even know that this even happened. A lot of the a lot of the processes that make us distrust are invisible. To like, you know, you may do, you know, I got a I got a past client that, you know, I really like the guy and I I served him and you know a lot of things happened and then one day, I said something. I don't even know what the heck it is what I said but it turned him against me. And, and we never really got that clear and straightened up, but it's just like, I feel really bad about it. And I tried to kind of figure out what it was, but you know, it doesn't take much to trigger somebody to go from, I love you to get the hell out of my life. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's just so important that, and, and, and you know, the thing is, is, um, um, you know, integrity can be breached, trust can be broken, uh, but it can be restored. I mean, I think this is talking to one of my spiritual leaders. He says, you know, the only way for a relationship to truly work is for forgiveness. You know, if you really love somebody and they, they mess up, we need to have this ability to forgive them uh, because forgiveness is one of the keys to restoring trust. And, uh, uh, um, does anybody have ideas on, I know we talk about trust, like we're humans, we mess up. Like there's not one of us in this room. There's not one of us on this planet that doesn't mess up. And so when we mess up, you got to fess up and say, I messed up. Okay. And I'm just curious about, and I'd like to hear from everybody on this after trust has been broken. What are some ideas you have about restoring trust? You want to take this uh, Alejandro or? Go, I'm going to say something about, about it. I'm not going to talk about restoring trust. All right. Um, restoring trust. First things first. I really like what you said about forgiveness. Because in the end of the day, to forgive thyself is also to lead thyself towards a new state of mind. Something happened. Both parties have a difference of opinion, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But you need to be mature enough to look at both the facts and even understand that from the position of the other, you might have acted out of line. And even though you don't agree, if you are to continue business with this party, either try to create a win-win or compromise, but in a way, Reestablishing this trust also starts with, can I even trust myself with this job anymore? Can I rely on myself to get the job done? And can I place myself into a situation where, well, our hunter's rolling in the background, <laughs> distracted me. Um, I lost my train of thought. Can I even have the maturity to forgive what happened and move on towards, you know, making money. Because at the end of the day, I want to get the job done, make my money and build a reputation because my reputation is based on trust. People that talk about me, et cetera. Now, this is all within reason and depends on how the trust got broken, et cetera, and if it makes sense. I do advise, if it's time to go, it's time to go. Jenna Casio, see you thinking, but Alejandro, 
if you can. Yeah, so the thing I want to talk about is um, trust and confidence. And now um, when we learned that, um, that confidence and certainty are basically the same thing. And so I want to add trust into that, all right? Where that's the certainty that I, I trust that I don't know what's going to happen. But I do and myself to always make the right decision, the best decision for myself, right? So I came up with this term called nervous confidence, right? When I said it, people were like, what? Can't be nervous and confident. Yes, you can. Because I can be nervous to do it, but I still have the confidence and the bravery, the courage to step in. Right. And now, like when you go, you go logical, it's like how many things, how many things could actually happen? Like, actually, how many things could well, okay, what are the possibilities? What the, what's the possibility of these possibilities happening? Which one is the most likely to happen? I'm all, you know, uh, it's not like you're going to go up to the ice cream man and he's going to start stabbing you. You know, can I get an ice cream and it gives you a fucking knife and you, you fucking choke on that shit, you know? <laughs> it's, it's not going to work like that. You know, that it, it, that is possible though, but it's like super like unlikely, you know? It's more, you're more likely to get the fucking ice cream man that's going to go, who? you fucking in Turkey and they fucking making you grab the ice cream, you're reaching out. You finally grab it. There's a fucking cone and he's got an extra cone in there. They, they get you with shit like that, you know? They're like, oh, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And they get it, they, they give it back to you and they, they, they take it back and they fucking, they grab it. They come out with a whole fucking ice cream and a little stick, right? If I go to Turkey, I can trust that the ice cream man is going to do that shit. Because I've seen it. I've had enough experiences and of experiences. And that's where the faith comes in. Faith comes in from, I've seen the experiences. I've seen the other people go through it. I've seen what, what who they were and what, who they are now. So I trust because I, I've, I don't, I've seen the sun enough times to know that the sun is gonna be there tomorrow. I'm not over here thinking like, man, yo, is the sun coming out? I don't know. I don't trust the sun. One time he didn't come out, but that's not true. true. The sun always came out. The sun always came out. So one day the sun might not come out. That's very true as well. Well, that's, that's a possibility as well, but it's a much smaller possibility. So we can't even put our focus in like that, right? And so, Trust comes from logic, logic, you know, what's the, what's the law of the universe, right? That is, we build trust in the things that are here and the things that we know. You know, you don't know everything, but I know what I know. I know what I fucking know. And I'm not going to doubt what I know. It's like there's a predictability. There's a you, predictability. We want to, yeah. You, we want to find that predictability. That's what the, that's what the trust. If even if the, there's chaos, then you can predict that you can't predict shit. That's the stock market. That is the stock market right there for you, right? When it's up, you can either predict that it'll either go higher or that it'll go lower. When it's low, you can predict that it'll go lower or they can go higher. It's like it doesn't even. Doesn't even fucking make any goddamn sense. It's so it's so complex. But anyway, I just saw Pit Bitcoin go from sixty k a Bitcoin to thirty to below thirty. I don't know if I trust that. <laughs> it's so volatile. It's very volatile. And you know, uh, I I actually kind of blows me away how many people trust in something they can't control, and, and it doesn't necessarily follow certain laws of the universe. It's like you know, like, but you know, 
can I trust that Bitcoin's going to be up tomorrow? I don't know if I trust that, but can I trust that the sun's going to come out tomorrow? A hundred percent. Absolutely. And so like, you know, like what processes and procedures, what's, you know, like, what is the process and is it something I control or is it something that's out of my control? Um, you know, I, it kind of blows me away how so many people are trusting in this crypto thing. And, and you know, it's something, there's something there. I mean, there, you know, there is like a digital currency. I did a post yesterday. I took it down because it just started going down a really super weird path. But um, anyway, I, you know, I mean, it's like if, if, if cryptocurrency is a currency, then why aren't people spending money, any of that currency with me? Hey, you know, it's like I have coaching. It's available. I'll receive your crypto, you know. But you know, then 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 somebody came back and said it's not really a currency yet, you know. And I'm like, well, you know what? It's not a currency until you actually until somebody actually gives me some. I have a big, I have a, a Coinbase account, and I'm ready to receive. But nobody's throwing any my way, and it seems like people are very covetous of their crypto, and they're not, not using it as a currency. And so how can a currency be a currency if you're only if you're only hoarding it and not actually using it as a currency? Because my my coaching and the services I provide, you know, there's this giving and receiving, you know, and so I give a lot of value with what I do and I'm prepared to receive. But it's just I find it really interesting. So, you know, if, if, if you call it cryptocurrency and then one of these experts chimes in and says it's really a currency, then. If you call it cryptocurrency, but it's not a currency, isn't that dishonest? How can I trust that, that the words say currency, but the actions don't say currency? How can I trust that? And so, I, you know, I think a big part of trust is honesty. Honesty to the truth, honesty to the facts, honesty, you know, does the, do the words, do the intentions match the behaviors, the actions and the results? Actually, um, I like using crypto to send money. Send me some, and then I'll know uh, it's a currency. No, like, uh, like if I, like if I know, like if I, um, it's just really fast. Like to send money, it's really, really fast, right? Especially if, if you have like the app itself for, for whatever Binance, Coinbase, or whatever. Or uh, I have, uh, I have Coinbase, and I have Crypto.com, and. Um, yeah, I, I think it's very, it's like fucking sending money. Whew, well, it's super cheap, super cheap. I, I sent like a, I sent like a thousand five hundred dollars for a dollar fifty one time. I was like, yeah, until somebody spends some with me, it's not a currency. Once I receive oh, yeah. it, I'll know it. I'll know it because a currency is something that happens in a business transaction, and I'm waiting. Somebody, somebody wants to pay me that way, I'll do it. I, I'm a little skeptical, you know. I'm now six months of coaching for ten k. You know, and I just watched crypto go from 60 from 60k to 30k, like in just a very short time. It's it's up a little bit yeah. right now. You can put it in a stable coin. Stable you coin. You put it in a stable coin. Like uh like they don't move. They don't they don't it's like a they mirror they mirror the dollar. Yeah. That's what I do with some of my coins as well. The one that, but yeah, some fucking that's yeah, it was a big drop. It was a fucking big drop. But it seems like most people have Bitcoin, the ones that are in crypto, but you know, I'm, I'm a generous giver and an excellent receiver. And until I actually experience that as currency in my business, it's not a current anyway, but trust, get back on the, on the topic. Sumed. Joe, something you said, something all you guys said, I was just integrating, like <laughs> downloading all this stuff. And I just reached a very profound thought about this. So this might be true, might not be true, but just something to think about. So the idea of like this maybe, right? Like this gamble of life creates dopamine in the brain. So it's actually like an addiction, right? So maybe creates dopamine, certainty creates serotonin, which is much more long-term. So I think that trust is a long-term game. It's a long-term strategy. And you talked about predictability, certainty, maturity, quality, all these different things, right? But I think what you said, Joe, is this, this communication stream, like how do we regain trust? We have this stream of communication, we have the stream of income, this giving and receiving, right? The circulation with the, with the restaurant example, we have people coming into the restaurant, people going out of the restaurant. What if everybody stayed into the restaurant? 
stayed inside. There would be no new customers, right? So oh, big money is the circulation. And I think that that trust comes from knowing the systems and the processes, like you were saying, but also knowing the difference between security and privacy, right? Like security is this idea of like safeguarding data. Like if you think about cybersecurity, right? It's about making the data safe. And the privacy is about the safeguarding of the user of their identity to make sure that th that is safe, right? Uh, so that's also something that came up for me as we were discussing this idea of safety because yeah, it's important to know that we are moving slowly into a world where you know we're being censored and these kinds of things. And there is this kind of hesitation or this lack of trust in you know, other powers, maybe government, maybe certain systems out there that are maybe crumbling in their trust or maybe, you know, coming out in, in the public in terms of what is actually going on behind the scenes. And I think there's fear on the other side, right? Trust is on one side, there's fear on the other side. So yeah, what do you get, have to say about that? Do you trust the media? Do you trust, you know, do you trust the what people are telling you? Do, do you trust that you know, the COVID vaccine is going to make you get healthier. You know, I just talked to my friend in uh, Toronto. He got, he never had COVID. He got the vaccine and he got violently ill. It's like, is the cure, you know, do you, what do you trust? Um, and uh, I, I like what you were saying, Sumed, about, uh, you know, I think of gambling, you know, a lot of people, you know, and, and what's, what's interesting, you talked about dopamine versus serotonin. And, you know, one of the appeals of gambling is it taps into this human desire to receive something for nothing. Like, you know, I have trust in my business. I have trust in my skills. I, I don't think of my business as risky at all. I know I got the goods. I am Simon Cal. You know, I'm, I, I don't sell bubble gum. I, I got the Willy Wonka golden ticket. And I trust in... in and I also look around and I see all these people that don't know what they're doing. And some of them want help and some of them don't want help. But I know if I put my message out there long enough, the right people will come my way. I trust that. And I trust that more than I trust any, any kind of gambling process, hoping to gain something for nothing. I'm, I'm beyond that shit. That's like, it's like, oh, you know, put a thousand in today, put 500 in today and have 10,000 out by Friday. It's like, get the fuck out of here <laughs> it's like you know there, there you know there is no you know money falling out of the sky stuff i understand the law of compensation that there's a giving and a receiving and i trust the law of compensation it works and i don't trust that i'm going to receive a bunch by not giving a bunch i know that when i'm that massive contribution i trust that you know we talked about this on our podcast you it's like i know if i poke something here something else is going to emerge somewhere else that i have an impact and i trust that when i put good when i put good, good value out into the world that somewhere somebody's going to see it and say joe i want to hire you i mean i just met a lady a couple of days ago she's cutting a purchase order right now i should have it tomorrow or by wednesday i think uh but six months of coaching for 10k paid up front it's like, you know, so, so, you know, do we trust? And one of the reasons a lot of people don't trust the business process, they say it is risky. It's because they don't know what they're doing. I, you know, I was in this training a couple of days ago and it was like the 10 reasons people fail in business. And I'm looking at the list, but ultimately it all comes down to, you don't know what you're doing. That's why you're failing. You're clueless. But if you know what you're doing, you know, and Warren Buffett said, risk comes from not knowing what you're doing. If you know what you're doing, you can really alleviate the risk and you can trust that if you know what you're doing, if you have processes where you know what you're doing, you can trust the process. So that's what I think. Nice. I, I want to talk about something really quick. And it is still on the topic of trust. Right, but I'm actually gonna record myself because I think I think I'm gonna say something really cool. Okay, so when we have the law of attraction, we talk about uh, 
moving as if. Right. That's 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 how we define this deep trust in one sentence. You say move as if. Right. And now the big problem is that so many people are saying that, but they're not actually living as if. Right. So let's just say you're going to you're going to make. Uh, a business. Right. Are you gonna you're gonna throw it? Fuck it. You know what? You're gonna throw an event. You're a concert creator. I have a friend. He he makes concerts, right? He puts together. You have to put together the lineup. You have to put together the 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 coordination of it. You have to put together the decoration, right? The location. If you're not doing all of these things to find these, then you're not moving as if. Right. And that's how people typically are. They're like, oh, I want this. I want this in my life. But they literally move in no fucking direction, no way of it. They don't move like it's going to happen for them. Let's take a let's take a dating and approaching pickup. You go up to the fucking girl like if she's going to come home with you that moment. Right. Maybe she won't but she could it's a possibility uh if you're honest enough if you're you know you're you're real if, they, if she feels like she can trust you she can only trust you if you move like you trust yourself right that is that's just the law of the universe is that the universe only gives us that which we are of of similar frequency to Right and now, let me just explain that real quick. Uh, uh, you know, they could give you something very great or something very negative. Those are still within your frequency. They're still similar. They're not off. They're part of your journey, right? They're a part of the things that you have to go through in order to to go through challenges, right? That's a, that's a challenge that was of your worth, right? You that's that was that was your challenge for you specifically, you know, um, and that was your reward as well. You can trust, you can always trust that you will get back as much as it's worth, like in the stock market, right? You will only get $10 worth if the stock goes up 10%. You will only get $10 worth of that stock. If you put in $100, you will only make $100, whatever the way it is worth, times the growth, right? You only grow as much as you put in, as much as you're comfortable putting in. But there's a risk. There's a real risk. There's a real risk. And I, I've been to this risk before where I started a whole business. I was doing drop shipping. I got some sales. And I fucking failed very bad. I think it, I, I think it was a failure for me because, because I lost a lot of money in the thousands. Not over 10, not over five, but still <laughs> a lot of fucking money. Um, and so it seemed like a failure to me. And I had lost trust in, 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 in everything because I was like, I was like, I did it before and I went in, I went hard. When I went in, oh my goodness, it, it took over my whole life. From morning to night, I was in the library. I was still in, I was at, this at the end of uni. I was morning to night, I was in the library working on my business for days and days. I put in so much energy for it not to flourish. And that was very painful. Right. And then I, I lost trust in my, I, I, I like to, to, to start another business again, to, to invest again. Right, I, I sort of lost that trust. But the thing is, I actually can't grow if I don't regain that trust to get in myself, which I have, I have now. But I cannot move forward until I get over that point where I didn't have trust, where I have lost my trust. And 
now I know is that um, I should have been focused more on the customer instead of being focused on success, right? I started to focus on the customer. Don't focus on success because if you focus, just focus on success, you're going to not be successful because you don't get success by focusing on success. You get sex success by focusing, <laughs> you get sex, successful success oh, from, from uh, um, doing the things that make people successful. Not just by thinking of the end. Think about all this, thank you to the end, all right? <laughs> we didn't hear that last right there. process out for yourself. You're cutting off, brother. Uh, you repeat, um, just cut off. Yeah, just repeat the last thing you said because it was like it, it really cut off that part. Oh, yeah. So, so you get success from all the, the steps that you took, not from being focused on the end result, right? And so, what you do is you create all of these steps ahead of time. You're like, what I need is I need to do this one, you need to do this one, and this one, and this one, this one. And that's going to give you the extreme certainty that you know what you need to do. And if you have that certainty, you have that confidence and you have that trust. Right. And so being able to see all of it laid out for you to visualize and you can finally organize it because you can't organize it and visualize it at the same time. Your brain's advanced. It just can't do that shit. It's very tough for your brain to do that. Right. Visualize, verbalize, organize, vitalize. There you go. There you go. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. You That's summarized amazing. it for me. You know, I, I wanted to, you said something about as if, and, and what I love about as if is it's about the imagination. And, um, you know, Napoleon Hill said anything the mind can conceive, you know, and believe it can achieve. And you know, I believe that all creations are created twice. They're created once in the mind and the imagination, and then we manifest them in that truth. And so, you know, uh, when I think of as if, when I think of imagination, I think about hypothetically, what if, what if it was this way, um, you know, uh, imagining it happening. And then, so if you can imagine it and then, but, you, you got to, what the mind can conceive and believe. And that belief is trust. Conceive and believe. And so, you know, it's like, okay, I got this idea. Now, does it align with the laws of the universe? And does it, do I, does it align? Do I trust that this is an alignment with the way that reality works? Or, or do I believe that I can bend reality enough to make this happen? And also, do I have trust in myself? that I can pull this off, you know? And so, um, you know, I think, I think that, um, and I think this is a really important too, you know, this idea of, okay, trusting God, like, do I trust God and the laws of the universe? Yeah, those are like, those are pre-established and they work, you know, gravity works. Do I trust others, other human beings? And do I trust myself? Like there's these different levels of trust, trusting God, you know, and my buddy says, don't, you know, to always put your trust in God first, you know, other human beings that, you know, good people will still let you down once in a while. Okay. But, you know, God never will. So I think there's this, like these three levels, there's this God level of trust, and then there's this others level of trust. And then there's this trust of myself. And I'm just throwing it out there as a can of worms, but, uh, uh, uh the imagination, you know, like first thing we do is we imagine stuff and we can imagine some pretty weird stuff that we can't manifest because it's just they, because it breaks the laws of the universe or it breaks the laws of others or it breaks the laws of, you know, self. Um, but so, so we, we need to, con we need to conceive ideas and then we need to align. Are they in alignment? Do I believe that, that it's in alignment with the laws of the universe, with the laws of myself and the laws of others? And, and if it meets the, if you can conceive it and not or believe it, if you can conceive it and believe it, then you can achieve it.
And, uh, and so we need to trust in those things. Again, that comes back to integrity and workability. Let me just throw that back. That's really amazing, Joe. The, the fact that you brought up imagination, you know, what neuroscience shows us is that imagination and memory come from the same part of the brain. It's called the servo mechanism. So it's so cool for the fact that, you know, we can use our old memories or even the feelings of our old memories, we can actually place in the future, right? We can take the feeling of when we won an award and win another award in the future. Like that is such an amazing thing, right? So I thought of trust almost like a compass. So this example is like, let's say you walk into a restaurant and let's say it's like Dunkin' Donuts or something, right? And you go, do you guys have French fries? And they tell you, no, we don't have French fries here. We're a donut company, you know? And then you come tomorrow the next day and you say the same thing. You go, do you have French fries? They'll, they'll have to get to a certain point where you come in like on the seventh day and they go, no, dude, what are you doing here? Are you crazy? Like you came here like seven times. There are no fucking French fries here, right? But there is this store over there that has French fries. You might want to try that out. And so it's like trust is like a compass, right? So through the repetition of trusting in your, in your end goal of the French fries, you're going to get pointed to that direction, brother. So, you know, that's how I see trust is like this, <laughs> this compass, you know. <laughs> I hope that our Dunkin' Donuts says there's high consumer demand for French fries in their menu. Will eventually adapt. Yeah, they'll change their menu. Yeah, yeah, totally. And I think that another element of trust is asking better questions. Because if we think of the example of dating that you gave Ivan, right? I think a lot of guys, with, when they have the opposite of trust in their own, let's say, skill set, social skill set, right? They're going to feel fear. And then when they feel fear, they're going to ask lower level questions, if that makes sense. Like, really, like, how, what do I say to her? Or how do I get her to like me? Like these lower level questions that doesn't really get to the crux of the problem. But I think that once you start to trust, you start to get into higher level problems, higher level solutions. So a better question would be like, instead of how to get her to like me is like, how can I put her in a better emotional state when she thinks about me and when she's around me? Right, that's a better question. And therefore you're gonna get better results with that question rather than trying to you know, get to that uh, other question, which is kind of like, yeah, it does get you started, but then there's a different level to the question. And I think that when you trust, it's, it's an awesome process that gets you. Instead first. of saying, how can I get her to see my value? It's like, how can I just show up as more value, valuable? You know, it's like, like if you, you know, if you're a giver, and then, you know, and then there's also this other thing. It's like, okay, I give and I give and I give to her, but she ain't given back, you know, is she even worthy of the prize? So, you know, if I chosen wisely, it, it, you know, am I giving in the right place? Am I giving, you know, is, you know, am I giving to a taker or am I giving to a giver? Because if you give to the givers, givers are wired to give back. But if you give to the takers, they'll just take and take and take. And so, you know, it's nice to give to people where you give in kind. I give to you and you give to me because we give to each other and we support each other. But there are people, so Ivan seems like he's ready to say something. Hello, yeah. Because um, cause there's a, this, this, this bitch that I fucking cut off because she was a goddamn leech. She didn't do shit. She didn't do shit, but you know, like, like um, and I trust first. You know, how, how can I trust you? I, I trust you first, right? I'll, I'll take you out. Hey, don't worry, this, this meal is on me, right? You know, don't, don't even worry about it. Um, I, so I'm going to trust first until my trust gets broken, right? I'm going I'm to trust you to a degree. I'm, gonna tr I'm not going to trust you with everything. I'm not going to trust you with my credit card, right? Or, or I'm not going to trust you tell, telling you a secret. But I'm gonna trust you in a with your own space, right? And now your actions will determine whether this trust I can trust you in more areas of my life, or if I should not tr I trust you in less areas, right? Because there are some people who like they're good for to have around to party. You want to go party? You hang out with these people. This is your party friends. You do not discuss 
certain topics around these these people, it just will not work out, right? Well, like let's just say, mm, I can trust my mom with my bank account, my social security, my 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 passport, all of that. But there are certain things about my sex life that I do not trust to speak with my mom about, right? <laughs> so it's just is developing. Knowing, knowing that for one, you can't trust everyone with everything and being okay with that, right? Um, being okay that you actually cannot re rely on somebody, put responsibility on someone to, to, uh, to do something that you would, would, would prefer it to be figured out as, right? Because some of these people, you give them, you give them a, a square, right? This is like, let's just say as an example, you give them a square and they're like, well, I don't like the square. And they start fucking up with the square. And you're like, well, bitch, just leave the goddamn square alone. I needed it because I needed to fucking put it for the bottom of my pyramid. So it has a strong base. Can't you see I'm pyramid of, uh, I got a Giza over here. You know, uh, why did you do that? I, I, I didn't want a fucking circle. I know you thought you, it was better as a circle. That's not what I wanted though, it, it, you know? So they, they'll want something else for you, right? Or they'll want something different from the energy that you give them. So that's why you can't trust them with, with that, with your energy in a way, with your, with your manifestation. Yeah, and how much responsibility do we take of that for ourselves that we didn't communicate? I'm building my beat, I'm building my Giza. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I love this Jim Rohn quote that time either promotes you or exposes you. You know, and so I like the idea, Alejandro, you know, it's like you got to give people a little bit of trust up front. I'm not going to give you the keys to the vault, you know, but, I, you know, it's like, you know, like when you can prove when people can prove they have a little level of trust, then they earn maybe a deeper level of trust. And then as they they live in that new space. You know, and then we all get to a threshold, like what's your, you know, every level has a new devil. <laughs> we get to that, we get to that spot where it's like, okay, I, I've hit a level. There's probably a higher level of trust. I know personally, dude, I got trust issues. I do. I mean, uh, I find it hard to delegate things sometimes, you know, I, I, I should have a little bit more team, you know, I, I don't have a, you know, uh, and I'm just like looking for the right person, I guess. I'm look, you know, and, and you know, here's a really powerful idea that there are no defective people, only a defective process. So, you know, it's not that people are bad, but we're just not giving them the, the tools or the, the, the structure, the system, you know, but because, you know, a lot of people say, I'm going to hire a sales manager, I'm going to hire a sales team, you know, but they have no marketing, they have no lead generation, you know, they have no processes in place. It's like, before you hire, you know, your first salesperson, maybe you should have a system to make sure that they have plenty of leads coming in. Because if you want them to generate leads, they are not a salesperson. They are now a marketer. And marketing skills are very different than sales skills. You could be like me and have both. But, <laughs> but you know, hiring somebody to be a salesperson and you're providing them no sources of, of potential customers, you're, you've set them up to fail, you know. And so it's like, oh, I don't trust these salespeople. They don't deliver. It's like, well you know, did you create it? Do you trust the process that you gave them that guarantees them to succeed? It's like, no, I didn't create that. And so uh, there, there is a, there is a certain onus of responsibility on us that, you know, if we're going to have somebody and put them in a position to trust them to execute for the things that, that we agree upon, I think that, that we need to create the conditions. We need to, pro we need to, you know, what to do, how to do it. We need to make sure they have the resources, uh, the feedback and the accountability, but like, we got to provide the system. If I, if I don't give you a system for success and then I just say, go do it, you're probably not going to, you may or may not succeed. But if I, if I do give you a system for success, then, you know, uh, I want to trust the people and the process. There are no defective people. There's only a defective process. And you know, and here's, here's some really bad news for everybody. Okay. When you start a business by, de by these, by definition, you have no systems and processes. You created something from nothing. 
And so it's, it's our responsibility as the entrepreneur to create the systems and processes. Uh, you know, everybody says business is risky, but my question is, is how can we create systems and process? How can we, how can we go into business with the intention that I'm, my job is how to ask the question continuously, how can I minimize, mitigate, eliminate risk? Because if my intention is to make sure that the processes and systems are stable and trustworthy, then I can have that safety feeling going in that I've designed a system that works. You know, everybody says business is risky, but how many Subway franchises do you see going upside down? How many McDonald's do you see going upside down? How many uh, H&R blocks do you see going upside down? And, and what's beautiful about a franchise is they've just already figured out the systems and they say, when you buy our stuff, when you buy our franchise, you're buying our proven systems. It's not risky at all. It's not risky at all because we, we put together systems where we do everything right. And when you do everything right, success is inevitable. You can trust this franchise system because we've already... You know, we did trial error, we did experiments, but we came up with a formula that works. I heard something the other day. So he says, I don't know much about chemistry, but when I walk into a chemistry class, you see this table of elements, okay? And, and one of the reasons people fail in business is they got this table of elements. And the thing is, is you got to take that table of elements and put together your formula that works for you. So what's your formula that works for you that you can trust? Yeah, man. And like, what's coming up for me is to understand that, you know, entrepreneurs or healers or anybody who's trying to do make change work, right? They're looking at the opposite of what's there. Like, for instance, I'm bringing people from fear to flow, right? Uh, as an example. So if there was no fear, I wouldn't have a business, you know, in a sense, like, we need the opposite in order to like, be the solution to the opposite, right? And, and really showing up in that way. So I know we're slowly running out of time. So I trust that you've listened this far. Guests, I trust that you are going to press the subscribe button. I trust that you are going to join the Telegram group. I trust that you're going to uh, sign up for Writing Reality. And I trust that you're going to check out each of our Instagrams because we all have a shit ton of value to offer. I love this topic. And you know, the truth is, is we, we talked about it a little over an hour, but dude, this is a one month research project. Like trust is so deep, man. And it's so, and it is the foundation of safety. It's the foundation of so many other things. And I just think that, uh, I just want to thank you guys for putting together a great topic for the day. This is a, this is something that sheesh, I'm almost thinking about doing a, thing out to my list hey I, let's do a brainstorm uh, i'm doing a brainstorm next week on trust you trust in business uh, would you like to join us and just doing a little thing as a lead generator to bring a bunch of people in a room and talk about even further great topic thank you guys ryan what's up it's your time it's your time to wrap this up my time to wrap this up oh right this has been Genius Days. Especially thanks to Joe and Kasia for joining the call. And of course, join each other's <laughs> Instagram. Quick shout out to Alejandro Acosta from Chicago. <laughs> and Smoochetiji, all three from Kolkata, San India. Francisco, bro. Oh, San Francisco. <laughs> I don't know topography. Shit. You said Chicago, bro. The fucking guy <laughs> The goddamn C in the goddamn fucking background is Chicago. <laughs> I get confused, okay? Anyway. <laughs> and of course, me from the Netherlands. This has been a great podcast. Good night.